in Sacramento, California. A beautiful Sacramento, beautiful day. You get way more sun every year than we do in Minneapolis. That's for sure. <laughs> yeah. So uh, I figured I'd uh, just talk to Paul. What's uh, what's his history? And my usual three questions are, and the first one is, uh, how did you discover solar energy in any way, shape, or form, and then specifically solar cooking? And then kind of, do you have any projects going on right now? And then finally, what do you see the future of solar cooking, and how can people promote it? So, um, if you live here where there's a lot of sun, you realize there's a lot of energy that's being wasted. And solar hot water, which you know is a resource we just don't utilize, solar hot water for the roofs is very efficient, provides your hot water, and they were just starting to come back in the mid late 80s. And it seemed like really something that everybody should have, and they should put in their houses, but they didn't. And then I saw, um, you know, that the sun beating your house down in the summertime because your attic has an oven up there, and if you're smart, you put a lot of um, insulation in your attic and you uh, make a light colored roof on your house. But there's a lot of energy wasted in the sun that we just don't use. And in 1988, I saw a little article either in a the Sacramento paper or the paper at Sac State about these people that were trying to start this organization to cook with the sun. It didn't say much, but it was a little contact. And I said, this is neat. And just immediately, it wasn't just like, oh, think about that or show me. Sure. I just said, this is neat. If you can cook with the sun, we have potential here. And I went really chased them down. They had an office down on 21st, uh, no, about 12th, uh, 10th Street, 11th Street downtown, Old Victoria. And they're starting to, people put some money together, um, Bobby Pullum and Bob Metcalf and some other people from Stockton, from UOP, sure. and Dave Martin. And I immediately went in and says, I want to be part of this. And I gave them some money to support them. And we immediately tried to work with SMUD to get um, the idea of using solar cookers to cut peak load at dinner time, people cook with smut, with solar cookers. And we started teaching teachers how to use science teachers. And once a month we'd have a all day workshop down there, take over the parking lot. We collect boxes from plant stores and we'd spend all day and send the teachers home with a cardboard box solar cooker. And that really got a lot of volunteers, people enthused. The teachers were enthused for a while, and unfortunately, most people's enthusiasm fades and they go back to the old routine of let's use the microwave or what right. to eat. But some people stayed with it, and we did, and we just kept preaching the gospel. And we had a lot of events. Um, we, anytime there was a fair or any public thing, we'd get a table. We had the first day for the fair, and we'd be there at the table with solar cookers, showing people how they work, giving out free samples of food, which you could do in those days. We did it at the whole Earth Festival in Davis, which was four days. A few years, we did it at two weeks worth at the State Fair, which was very, very hard on volunteers. You get two weeks worth of volunteers, two or three at night on the um, We had a couple years, we had these big events on the state capitol steps, and there's pictures somewhere of hundreds of solar cookers out in front of the west steps of the state capitol. Bob Metcalf gave me a PowerPoint. Oh, okay, yeah. so I yeah. was involved in that yep. each time they did it. That was a lot of fun. And there was some momentum going locally, which we tried to push to internationally because the need, of course, in the third world where they cut down half the forest for fuel and cook with wood and do foresting that many continents fish for that. And it, very, we had a big local organization, and we had a large, uh, larger international organization once we had enough money to support that. Um, different directors have come to Solar Cooker with different ideas. We've had some directors that we supported volunteers locally doing events, and we had a big kind of a club that supported the organization with working at these events as volunteers. And, and we, one of the more recent directors kind of has a show me doing it international and we don't do the local thing. But soda cookers for years sold soda cookers. We sold the box cookers and when we figured out how to cook it and tested it, we 
sold those. We experimented with a number of different types of cookers, and I volunteered many times to take these cookers home and, and put a temperature test in them and test them over every, every hour, you know, from 10 o'clock in the morning until 3 in the afternoon to see how hot they were getting and how fast they were getting hot and things like that. So that was always fun to be able to do that and help. It's um, lots of gotten busy and retired, and the volunteer group, I miss that. I think it'd be nice to try and start that again locally. Sure. To get that up. Um, I forgot your second question there. Oh, just how about right now? You're still still doing some solar cooking? I or? cook with it, and mm -hmm. I try to encourage others to do it. We really need to build the momentum locally. Because mm -hmm. if you go over somewhere else and say, why don't you try this? And they'll say, well, are you doing it at home? And you go, well, no. We, we <laughs> need, it needs to be so common when someone turns on a sitcom on television, people go out in the backyard and they, and they, they see them or they're being sold in Kmart or Walmart or Target or somewhere. We haven't reached that level. And mainly because I, we take the path of least resistance, I think, in this country, fast food, junk. Um, I think it in the microwave. But if we could get the slow cooker movement involved, it really is like a crock pot, but with that kind of momentum and time to take to cook something. It's just going to take some push on a statewide level and at least each local level to get people to do it. We just have even cook-offs. We'd have recipe people bring the cookers to cook something. We'd have a local chef, you know, that would judge it, and that's a lot of enthusiasm. And these kind of things. Are necessary, I think, to keep the enthusiasm and momentum going. We really, with this push for climate change, fight climate change, um, we're missing the boat by not tying into some of these groups. I think Susanpeter.org and other groups that can say, well, if you want to really do something to change the climate, to to help your part, you know, quit eating meat and dairy products, and have a hybrid and use a solar cooker. And we're kind of missing that connection with the overall picture of helping the climate. And I think that would be a, um, something that we need to pursue. And when COVID maybe is a little bit gone away and people are more open to go back to the office and meeting in groups, there's a real opening here of something that needs to be done. Sure. That's, I'd like to see in the first world you know, the U.S., Canada, Europe, more people use solar cooking. We have energy and we always have ample amounts of propane or electricity and natural gas. But one day that might not be there and the cost, especially with natural gas and propane, is going up. So maybe that's an incentive to try something else and to do this. But the solar cooker organization, Solar Cooker International, which used to be solar box cookers, was SBIC. Solar Box Cookers International, when it first started out, we got the box from around the late 90s, might have been in. Um, I would like to see us getting the back to the domestic agenda of doing things actually here. Sure. To get it going here, because we can afford them. Third world, you know, they're a pricey luxury. Yeah. So. Uh, India seems to have some formula, because they have they have entrepreneurs developing right and left, and they they seem to uh, just really go gangbusters getting the word out. I don't know about adoption. I mean, with a billion or more people, but uh, having being a collector, there's always another one popping up in India. It's sometimes the same great version of a parabolic or a vacuum tube, uh, but they 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 see it. Well, they they know. I think part of being a necessity is mother of invention. The cost for firewood or fuel, propane or something else to burn, is so prohibitive that these things just make sense. Once you've got past the initial cost, you have something that's going to cook for free for you for who knows how long. And that is why they were you know, more accepted in other places for fuel for firewood or whatever. It's hard to come by or really expensive. We are definitely spoiled in the third world. We, the cooking costs and decent cooking costs are at least in small parts are proportionately expensive. Sure. Just getting people to keep using these. Yeah. Like I cook with it 
in the summertime twice a week probably. Yeah. And they have leftovers then they use for a few days. It's getting people to change their habits. Yeah. And I think they do it in India because there's really no alternative. Yeah. The other alternative is expensive propane or mm. some form of fuel, wood or coal. Yeah. And burning your home is a mess. And India's in that transition from third to second world and then they a lot of well educated people. So that's it's almost a necessity. We're here. Oh, I feel like doing it. Oh, I'm lazy. I'm too yeah. I don't think about yeah. it in the morning. I got a microwave. Let's just uh, yeah. <laughs> Let's saute something or go down to the fast food joint yeah. like crap. But <laughs> it, it's it helps people to eat better and and we could tie into climate change movement mm-hmm. and healthy eating and a slow food movement. That would be a really sure. good way to bring them all together yeah. in the future. Yeah. It's a solution in search of the public relations or the marketing yeah. to make people aware that the solution exists. Yes, absolutely, yeah. And, and we, we need to really become, catch on like, Frisbee's caught on, or yes. <laughs> cell phone's caught on, or something, yeah. Yeah. And, and it's there, but then there's some of us that, who are introduced to the idea, and it's just like, light goes on, and we want to get it and go, and we see the potential. And others is like, ooh, yeah, yeah. it's too much work, I have to change my lifestyle. Yeah. And the slow the cooker movement would be, the, would be a way to tie in. I mean, those are usually older people who are retired, or and mm-hmm. or have time, and remember a sure. low, slow cooked meal. Yeah. 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 I always sell it as a idea as well, do you ever use a crock pot? Right. Just think crock pot but with no electricity. And yep. using the sun for power. The recipe using a crock pot, you can use in a solar oven and you just put it out the same way and go off to work and come home at night and your dinner's cooked. Yeah. And you know, by the time you get home the sun's moved away. It's cooked, it's sterile, there's nothing you worry about in there. That's the worry you get. We get sick off it and that kind of thing. It's like, no, it's well beyond the pasteurization yeah. temperatures. Yeah. It's just changing their lifestyle to do it. But here, there's not a big part of people's um, yeah. budget. It just has to be those people that really want to make a change and want to help the earth and see the potential and the fun of this and the, yeah. how great the food tastes. They're taking the time to do this is um, something that will be preserved in history, hopefully, yeah. um, for the future. See what we've done in the past, because we worked so hard for oh, years here, since oh. it started in 88. For about the next 12 to 15 years yeah. in Sacramento, we really put out a lot of effort. Once or twice a month, I was volunteering or something or testing sure. a cooker. And that's a lot of work to see kind of fade away. It hasn't yeah. gone away, but it's, it's lost yeah. momentum. Yeah. To get the momentum back would be great. Yeah, yeah but you just you hear, I mean, we fortunately we talked to all the neighbors and it was yeah. something that kept my sanity during yeah. COVID lockdown. We'd yeah. go for walks and talk to people. Sure. Otherwise, it would have been tough. Yeah. Yeah. And it's having a neighbor who would do that makes a big difference. Yeah. Well, let me show you the slow cookers I have. Sure. This is a box cooker we experimented with for a long time. We tried, made out of pre foiled cardboard. These are um, some of the original Kirkhole cookers here. I got cookers everywhere in here. Sure. This is one of the folding <laughs> ones that we had as a kit one time to sell from Solar Cookers. Mm-hmm. Solar Cookers International, Solar Box Cookers International. And we had these and we sold them and shipped them all over the place. Gosh, I wish this, I didn't think about it. And it is one of those cookers. Wow. And this is probably one of the last in captivity with a box to it <laughs> that was shipped, um, that we could ship out. And then you could put it together like a solar cooker up like a regular Kirk Hole. This is an original Kirk Hole here, I believe. Mm-hmm. This is one of the ones, cardboard ones we made when we were making them for um, school teachers. Here's one made out of wood, press board. And I fixed the glass on that. Then I have a bunch of. Oh, here's a little treasure. Oh, sure. I've got that. You got one yeah. sunspot? Yep. Yeah. You know, not just the one you had once, you know what that is. Yeah. 
I have pots and pans and all kinds of stuff on here some places. All the sets for the cookets. What else do I have? Like cookers. Is this a, a Sun Toys? Yeah, well these are these are actually cookets. Oh cookets, okay. This is a cook it, and this is a Jap the Hub um, version from Africa. You've seen those where they they stitch oh, the edges? No, no. Okay. But uh, Bob mentioned that. Yeah, yeah, what they do over in Africa, they take them and to keep them from falling apart or getting wet, yep. they stitch cloth, almost a waxed cloth sure. material, on the edge. And this is one that was made in Africa that out of a plant over there. And I donated some money to get this just because they thought it was neat and historic and what they do. It's a little smaller than a regular cook it. But it's a heavier waxed cardboard, sure. which makes it hold up better. Yep. It folds out the same way. And um, it's a little smaller version, but it's tougher. Yeah. It's a more durable, the waxed cardboard, and sewing the edges, you can get a little bit damp. You mm -hmm. know, if you put a cook it in, the, in the, it gets wet, you're kind of up the creek and you don't have a cooker anymore. And that's true with a lot of these things. And this one is a little different for this is um i always was trying to find some way to manufacture these or find some way to duplicate this in this country and i, I never really you get too many things going on in your life you don't do it sure this is just a cook it in here um made out of it's a cook it made out of the stuff you make a, a reflector for the front of your car sure the insulated foam and that's an inexpensive way to make a cook it do you have one of these uh, Bob just gave me one. Okay, yeah. well, then you're in good shape. <laughs> yes. <laughs> Some of our ancient history from here. Yes. This was the center of cooking innovation at one time. This is, this is where it started in Sacramento. And yep. fortunately, people like you have now taken this and gone places with it and done more with it. We're and trying. It's, it's, it's your out, my junky garage. Um, I store <laughs> a lot of people's stuff in there. But these are just some of the, and here's some of the box I'm putting together. Mm -hmm. Some pieces, um, and this is just kind of what I might have another cook it in here. Yeah, these are cook it. They take the store, and it might have a, all kinds of people tramp. Again, this is one someone made out of. Oh wow, it's like a packing. Yeah, it's like yeah. a foil packing, and you just yeah. cut a design out of it. And we tested them and tried them and played with them and so forth and. They don't stay up as well as the cook it. It's not as stiff, but it's waterproof and it's inexpensive and it's light. Yeah. So I, I should really get a museum going somewhere permanently. I'll see where you have gaps. Maybe you don't sure, have sure. Okay, it's a great thing <laughs> to do with some of this that I have over the years. Those are many things that we've had over the years. I need to go through because I have all the newsletters from Silver Cookers from wow. way back yeah. when and when it started. and. Um, is that all scanned in somewhere? Someone should have that scanned in somewhere by now. Check with the office. I would hope. Town to yeah. Get PDF copies or something. Yeah. Yeah. Of all the newsletters, put them out quarterly. Yeah. It was. It was. You know, getting it off the ground originally was, and getting that momentum going was really something. Yeah. And it's going, but not as much as it was. Yeah. And we need a spark plug, someone younger than me or you, <laughs> that can really punch this and go but we yeah. can be you know financial and inspirational yeah. motivation for them well this is great i can't think of anything else to ask i mean you've covered uh cover a lot of ground and yeah. great to see that uh you've got some some of the history preserved here as well and I do. so it's a messy place yeah. yeah now you've inspired me to maybe go through some of this and see what i have mm -hmm. here's one of these <laughs> foil ones oh yeah right here that someone left out in the rain mm. and she says i know you still do this i've had to city in my garage she moved about a year ago mm -hmm. and it's been sitting here for 10 months and I need to try to repair it and save it sure and that's one of my goals to do is to try to you know over the winter here try to um, wow. recover this some way with um, foil the yep. box is still good make sure it's still tight yeah and save this so it can be reused and that's the one that came in this box right here this mm. box was a cover on it so sure um they ha they work quite well mm -hmm. except for like all cardboard if it gets a little too wet it's in trouble yeah 
No, it look considering if if it's been out in the rain and it's actually still holding and its it's shape. Probably, yeah, you know? thirty years old. Yeah. Sat in our garage for a long time. Well, she moved, so yeah, you know, I got to save it. Sure. My ex-wife was a teacher, and many teachers she got in the school, and they'd gone through the science program that we had taught teachers to make a cooker. And then these cookers sit in the storeroom in their classroom. When they were going to them, we're going to throw them away. So she was. My, we rescued them probably a dozen of them and fixed them up and got them into the hands of someone that would put them to use. Sure. A lot of them just end up in dumpsters when they have house cleaning. Yeah. Well, I'm glad you're a fanatic about this <laughs> because we need some of those out there. Yeah, to yep. do this we got to have yeah, a little extra and hopefully yeah. this will help the word. Yeah. So, yeah. Well, yeah, and there's a cook it that got wet that I ought to repair for somebody too. Oh, it yeah. It came apart, delaminated, all the foil came off. Oh, yeah. Man, I got to sure. fix that. Yeah. So oh, I see you got a project. You got the sport. Yes. Sport. Oh, yeah, Society yep. Sport. Yeah, the Sport right there. Yep, that's a One of my Twin favorites. Cities. Yeah. Well, great. Well, thank you. Thank you. Well, sir, it was great. Uh, that, uh, that, uh, I learned a lot, too. See? Okay. What's going well, on? there's a little bit of networking going on. Right. Big time. <laughs>